Hey, bro, you okay? Hey, they pulled him over. He's over there. Let's find out what the issue Well, he just punched you for no reason. I know that. We're going to find out why. Well, he's over there. You know the cops stopped him. Yeah, we're done. We're not talking to him anymore, okay? Because I don't want more fights. Right? I don't know. So, if you can stand on the sidewalk or go the other way, okay? I don't know why. And I'm going to lecture him about not no, no, no. putting your hands on people. No, no, no. He's a good friend Okay, okay. Hey, why'd you punch that guy for? Listen, this guy just punched him right in the face right in front of me. That's amazing. Let me talk. Jesse, he said he doesn't want to be a victim today, but he's going to get in trouble, right? So, you got to leave him alone. So, he had a bad day, so he can just go around punching people in the face, apparently. my opening scene like I said and that white guy just punches the uh, I think he's like Vietnamese or Asian or something punches him right in the face and he falls on the ground and my first thought was to because I don't know if he was crazy and he was gonna do something to me because I was gonna let him have it and he just like walks away like nothing happened and that's what goes on down in these parts north of the downtown there's a lot of mental illnesses a lot of drunks I swear to God if I didn't well, anyways <laughs> So anyways, getting away from that, let's get into the story of what happened to Miss DeFelice. She was murdered 40 years ago, and the killer was just caught not too long ago. And the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club has a, a somewhat of a weird connection. Let's get right into the story. For those of you who still live in Las Vegas and you've lived here for a long time, or you used to live here you'll remember back in the 70s and the 80s right across the street right there used to be a restaurant it was called sambo's there was three locations they were all i believe on the strip and this was on 601 north las vegas boulevard and that is where 25 year old sandra renee de felice used to work as a waitress she worked at the sambo's right across the street and she lived on the 1500 block of bonanza which is straight down uh, a mile if that we're going to visit the location of where she was murdered and we're going to talk about the story of the culprit who was responsible and how he got caught we're about a mile east of where Sandra used to work at that restaurant I noticed some gang graffiti right there uh, that WF stands for white fence uh, that is a gang from East Los Angeles. Uh, that might be the oldest gang uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, they go back, some would say, about a hundred years. So moving along, getting back to the story. So this is the neighborhood where Sandra and her roommate lived at the time. They moved from Boise, Idaho to Las Vegas. It was her and her friend and Sandra had a young daughter. Matter of fact, she was a baby when they moved to 1505 East Bonanza Road. So on December 26th, 1980, it's after Christmas, and Sandra was dating a man. Now her boyfriend shows up to the house, you know, just to stop by, say hello, what have you. When he's walking into the home, he calls out her name and he doesn't hear a response. And he walks through the house and he sees his girlfriend on the floor, not moving, covered in blood. He immediately screams her name and runs and dials 911. And when paramedics arrived, uh, there was nothing they can do. Uh, she was already dead. She was taken to the Clark County Coroner's Office for autopsy and it was determined that she was murdered. She was beaten, stabbed, 
strangled and she was sexually assaulted. Now, when detectives were canvassing the house for clues, they did get a latent fingerprint. It was to one man by the name of Paul Nuttall. Now, they did question this man about what his fingerprint was doing there, but of course, he was friends with Sandra's roommate, so they quickly scratched him off as a suspect in the matter. Now, they did get some uh, DNA from the crime scene, but of course, uh, that would, uh, you know, DNA back in those days, that was a space age technology that maybe they would know something later on. So it was kept, of course, in an evidence locker until recently when they did a DNA check through a DNA database. Uh, the DNA, of course, came back to the man whose fingerprint was there all along. And this time, we're about now, 64 years of age, Paul Nuttall, he was arrested at his Vegas home. He lived somewhere in the Northwest. So he lived all of his time for 40 some odd years doing his thing while knowing he would pass by this house every blue moon that he murdered that poor girl. So it looks like that case has been solved, but uh, he's still going to trial. So it remains to be seen uh, what kind of sentence he's gonna get, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna get life in prison. Sandra is buried in Boise, Idaho, so I will be visiting her grave at a later date and time. However, so what makes this um, crime scene location uh, fairly interesting, in my personal opinion, is that this is, of course, as you can see, this is the Hells Angels Motorcycle Clubhouse. And this is where the murder took place. Just by dumb luck, the Hells Angels have a club here where uh, a murder took place over 40 years ago. And as you can see, you got the death hemp right there. Need some paint, I'm sure they're gonna take care of that. And of course you got the Hells Angels Death Head logo right there, Las Vegas. Got some cameras over there. So, and just by dumb luck, uh, the Hells Angels uh, have recently had uh, an ongoing war with another motorcycle club called the Vagos. If you don't know who they are, well, their uh, color of their jackets, uh, they're pretty eye-catching, they're lime green. And the Vagos in the motorcycle uh, club world uh, is a very deadly rival of the Hells Angels. And we're gonna be, we're gonna be getting more involved in motorcycle club stories as time goes on. So if you want me to cover any, let me run across the street so I don't get ran over. So if you want me to cover any uh, motorcycle club stories, uh, definitely send me an email, Lamont at large stories at gmail.com. So last year, uh, there was a freeway shootout uh, between the Hells Angels and the Vagos over on US 95 off of Wagon Wheel. Uh, there was a group of Vagos riding on motorcycles when some angels pulled up alongside of them and opened fire. Uh, nobody died, but uh, six or seven Vagos Motorcycle Club members were injured in the shooting. So three members, well, actually technically, so the president of this chapter of the Hells Angels, uh, is one 66-year-old Richard DeVries, uh, he was arrested along with some prospects for the club. So they weren't members, they were just prospects, which means they're just, you know, they're checking out their pedigree, uh, seeing who they are or what have you. Uh, you had 46-year-old Stephen Alo and 26-year-old Russell Smith. So these three individuals have been charged with amongst uh, other things, uh, conspiracy to commit murder, uh, shooting into an occupied vehicle, uh, attempted murder, battery with a deadly weapon, probably some other stuff that I'm missing. Uh, so they're sitting on ice right now. I don't know uh, if, they're, if they have bailed out. Uh, last time I checked, uh, it was either no bail or the bail was very, very high. But uh, just wanna say before uh, I end the video, uh, Hell, the Hells Angels, of course, have nothing to do with this murder. This happened 42 years ago, 43 years ago. 
And uh, I, it's just by dumb luck that their clubhouse happens to be the scene of where a horrible uh, murder took place. The world of motorcycle clubs, the people that are associated with these clubs and are part of these clubs and organizations, uh, could be a very dangerous world. Now, when it comes to motorcycle clubs, it's just like anything in life. Uh, you're gonna have some good people, you're gonna have some not so good people. There's plenty of people that are a part of uh, motorcycle clubs, whether you're a warlock, a pagan, a galloping goose, a Hell's Angel, a Mogul, a Vago, many, many others that uh, they escape me right now. You got some that are even firefighters, they got city jobs, uh, some are even cops, and some are cross with the law. So I just think, it, you know, it's a brotherhood of guys who like to ride motorcycles, they like the, 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 the rebel uh, feel of it, they like the outlaw bad boy 1%. You know, people fear them or whatever, and they thrive off of that. So you're going to have some guys who ride in packs and, uh, you know, they just go to a bar, have a couple beers. And you're going to have some other guys who do that and will punch you in the face several times and uh, shoot you two or three times uh, if you cross them. So if you're, ever in a, if you're ever in a bar or wherever and you see one, say hello. Because, you know, you never know. Probably an okay dude but sometimes maybe they're not. Lamont at large, I'll catch up with you on the next vlog. Oh, by the way, if anybody's interested in this house for sale, it's $585,000. So if, uh, if you're in the market and you want a nice big house, come down to Las Vegas. Anyways, rest in peace to the victim, uh, Sandra DeFelice. I'm glad that the culprit was caught and was arrested and hopefully justice will be served upon him. I'll catch up with you guys on the next video. Peace out.